Whoa, what's going on? It's taking a very long time for it to load. There we go. Just gotta let it do its thing. <laughs> It's just the overview, so we're just gonna listen to the the narrative, go through all the all the stats, and then we'll go to the next tutorial. So just bear bear with me. Welcome to the training lesson on the Digital Stores Management System or DSMS, often pronounced DISMOS. We'll conduct this lesson right here on the ramp, so I'm going to run the batteries and bring up some systems. DSMS is the primary interface between the pilot and payload. In the A10C, weapon profiles are used to select and configure the weapon of choice, so that you are not really selecting a weapon per se, but selecting a profile which has a weapon assigned. For example, you can create multiple profiles for a particular weapon to prepare for various tactical scenarios. DSMS allows you to create and customize up to 20 profiles, each saved under a unique name. Profiles can be cycled by DSMS controls on the MFCD, the select rocker on the UFC, or hold task controls when the HUD is soared. A selected profile is called an active profile and is displayed on the bottom left corner of the HUD. Right. DSMS includes the following pages status page, inventory select page, selective jettison page, and missile control page. Some of these have additional subpages. That's DSMS page. The DTS upload page is now up. Press OSB 18 on the left MFCD to upload the DSMS data. Okay, now let's select the DSMS page with OSB 14. You are now looking at the status page, which is the primary display of the DSMS. This page allows you to quickly view the following information. Weapon inventory and status for each of the 11 stations. Release settings for the active profile. Gun status and ammunition remaining. EO power timer if Maverick is active. At the top of the display, OSB 1, 2, and 4 and 5 allow you to access the other pages of the display. Without pressing any buttons, take a moment to become familiar with the display. Press the spacebar key when you are ready to proceed. Alright, just a quick little overview so you can, if you guys, uh, people that might not know about it, uh, how he says OMS 1 through 5, even though they're not labeled here, they go by from, in a clockwise fashion, from top all the way around 5 10 15 20 so if they say OMS 6 you'd count 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then onwards so that's pretty much how it works it took me a little while to figure that out but that's literally how that works so we'll continue on let's set the master arm to training mode right click once to set the switch to train the blue indication on the DSMS denotes training mode. White indicates master arm safe and green indicates master arm arm. As you can see, stations 1 through 11 are displayed sequentially clockwise starting from the bottom left corner. Each station box indicates the profile name which usually corresponds to the designation of the loaded weapon and the quantity remaining. Depending on the weapon, additional information may be contained inside the box such as the launcher configuration or weapon sensor status. In the bottom center of the display, the cannon data block indicates the ammunition type and amount remaining. The center of the display indicates the current HUD mode and additional details of an active profile where one is selected. Press the spacebar key to proceed. So yeah, clockwise, these are the actual numbers. The outside numbers and the quantities on the inside. Starting with station 1 on the left side of the aircraft, we are carrying the ALQ-131 ECM pod, an LAU-68 2.75 inch rocket pod with 7 training rounds loaded, an AGM-65D, a BRU-42 rack with 3 BDU-33 training bombs, 
and a GBU38. Continuing to the right side, we have another GBU38, another BRU42 rack, an AGM65K, the ANAAQ28 lighting pod, and the LAU105 launcher loaded with two AIM-9Ms. We are also carrying 1,150 target practice rounds for the gun. Let's first cycle through the default profiles loaded from the DTS. To do this, we need to take the HUD out of guns mode and into either CCIP or CCRP modes. Press the Hold Test Master Mode button or the M key on the keyboard once. The joystick button on the side is what I'm pressing. We can now cycle the profiles using the Select Rocker key on the UFC. Alternatively, because the HUD is currently soy, you can press the Hold Test DMS left or right commands or delete and page down on the keyboard. You can do it on the joystick if you have a hold test. Or you can do that with the rockers on the joystick as well. To see a list of all loaded profiles, let's enter the profile main page by pressing OSB1. The profile main page presents a list of all loaded profiles. Press OSB19 to designate the WTU Rockets profile with the pointing arrow. You can now move this profile up and down the list using OSB 6 and 7. Disable the profile with OSB 9 and activate the profile with OSB 17. However, let's instead press OSB 3 to enter the profile control page to view the settings of this profile. The profile control page displays the weapon settings as set in the current profile. You can alter the settings along the left and right sides of the display. The settings in the profile table in the center of the display can also be changed, but from other pages. OSB 19 and 20 will cycle through the profiles without making them active. Let's try changing some of these settings for this profile. Looking at the right side of the display, you can see the current release quantity is set to single. This means that for each press of the weapon release button, only a single rocket will be fired. Let's change this to ripple single by pressing OSB 6 twice. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. There we go. Continue. It's going to make us change quantity. You can now set the ripple quantity to determine how many rockets will be fired while the weapon release button is held down. For example, to set the quantity to 3, press button 3 on the UFC and then OSB 8 to enter the value into the profile. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. Very simple. That's how you change quantities. Additional options on this page include OSB 10 to set the default HUD mode and OSB 18 to paste current profile settings into a new profile. Press OSB 16 to enter the profile settings subpage to access additional settings underlined in the data table of the display. So this you can now see additional profile settings. On the left side of the display, these include the escape maneuver, desired time of flight, and minimum altitude. On the right side of the display, you can set the horizontal offset, vertical offset, weapon eject velocity, and bomb rack delay. Press OSB 3 to save the changes to this profile. We are now back on the profile main page. Just as we did for the WTU profile, we could select and edit any of the other profiles. Press OSB 1 to return to the DSMS status page. Profiles can also be accessed in manual mode by selecting stations via OSBs directly on the status page. Multiple stations can be selected if they are loaded with identical weapons, launchers, and profile settings. Press OSB 7 and 19 to select stations 4 and 8 loaded with BRU racks. There we go. So Note the additional profile information in the center of the display. The profile name now begins with an M forward slash to indicate manual mode. Profile operations in manual mode are identical to default profiles, 
but the profile of standalone and cannot be cycled to unless it is saved into the DSMS. Pressing the profile OSB1 while in manual mode will open the profile control page directly. Let's take a look at the profile settings available for bomb release. Bomb profiles include the additional option of the fuse settings with OSB7. This can be cycled between nose for nose fusing, tail for tails fusing, and NT for nose and tail fusing. Press OSB6 twice to change the release setting to Ripple Single as we did earlier for rockets. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. With bomb release set to a ripple setting, you can also adjust the ripple quantity and impact separation in feet. Let's change the impact separation to 150 feet. Type in 150 into the HUD scratch pad using the UFC and then press OSB9 to enter the value into the DSMS. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. Now save the changes with OSB3. Press OSB1 to return to the DSMS status page. Next, let's take a look at the missile control page accessed by pressing OSB2 from the status page. The missile control page is used to configure the AGM, TGM-65 and AIM-9 missiles. We'll discuss the Maverick missiles first. OSB4 enables and disables power to the Maverick Seeker head. Whenever the seeker head is activated, it will need three minutes to align, so this should be done prior to entering the target area. Once activated, an EO timer is displayed in the bottom right corner of the display. You can try pressing the button now, but note that in training mode, the DSMS will not actually power up the seeker. OSB5 selects between manual, location, and time modes of applying EO power. In manual mode, the seeker head is only powered by the pilot pressing the EO power OSB. In location mode, the seeker head is powered at a set range and bearing from a specified waypoint. In time mode, the seeker head is powered at a specific clock time. Press OSB 5 to set the location automatic power function. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. There you go. Configuring the Location Automatic Power On function requires a few steps. First, select the Waypoint Rotary by pressing OSB9. You should see the up-down rotary arrows on the OSB become highlighted. Now, press the Function button on the UFC indicated by the F adjacent to the UFC scratch pad on the HUD and press the select rocker up to cycle to the next waypoint. You will see the waypoint number change on the missile control page. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. Now to enter bearing and range type in a bearing value in the UFC for example 065 and press OSB 7 then type in a range value, for example 20, followed by OSB 8. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. And then 20, and that's the range. And that's how you can change it. EO power will now be applied to the Maverick automatically as you approach 20 nautical miles at bearing 065 from the designated waypoint. The diameter of the activation point is 10 nautical miles or 25% of the set range from the waypoint, whichever is greater. When set to time mode, the time EO power function on OSB 10 is used to enter a clock time value in a similar fashion as we entered the bearing and range information for location mode. The Maverick Boresight Adjust function on OSB 6 is used to set the boresight position of the missile seeker. On the left side of the display, OSB-19 is a rotary function to set the AIM-9 missiles to off, cool, and select modes. When set to select, the HUD mode changes to air-to-air. -to -air. 
Press OSB1 again to return to the DSMS status page. Next, we'll take a look at the Jettison Select page. Press OSB4. There we go. The Jettison Select page is similar to the status page, except you are now selecting stores to Jettison. OSB4 is a rotary function to select between fuse options. OSB5 is a rotary to select between the following Jettison modes. STR, Store. When in STR mode, the user can jettison stores from one or more selected stations. Stores are released in pairs mode. Rack, Station Rack. When in Rack mode, the user can select one or multiple stations that have racks assigned to them and jettison them along with any stores attached to them. If more than one station is selected that is assigned a rack, then they are released in paired mode. A rack or pair of racks is jettisoned with each press of the weapon release button. MSL, Missile. In this mode, any Maverick assigned to an LAU-88 tier will be launched in an unguided, unarmed mode with each depression of the weapon release button. If both tiers are selected, Mavericks will be launched in pairs. MSL jettison is not available for the LAU-117. If a station is selected that is not loaded with a LAU-88 and Maverick, only the station number will be displayed in reverse video. When you are ready, press OSB1 to return to the status page. For our last topic of the lesson, let's enter the Inventory Select page with OSB5. The primary function of the Inventory page is to allow you to assign a particular weapon to a specified weapon station. This allows you to correct an error when the weapon type does not match the one specified in the profile, and it allows you to set additional weapon settings not available in the Profile Settings page. It also allows you to create virtual payloads in training mode. Outside of a malfunction that produces an error, you should not have a need to access this page in normal operations, because the DTS cartridge will include all the default profiles for the weapons loaded on the jet. However, We'll try setting up one station as an example. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. We'll reset the Maverick on station 3. First, press OSB 18 to select the station. There we go. Now press OSB 18 again to select Missile as the weapon class and now you can select the specific missile model loaded. Notice also you can select between missile types with OSB4, missile quantity with OSB5, and launcher configuration with OSB8. Press OSB18 once more to select AGM-65D. Press O once more to select, which I did. Hmm. Yeah, I'm doing it. Missile quantity with OSB 5, launcher configuration with OSB 8, press OSB 18 to select AGM 65D, which is that one, which I did, for some reason it's not letting me, interesting. wonder what's going on here let's see if I can't uh, get past that I'm only gonna give it a little bit of, this is just an overview on how to utilize and this was just the last part of this so I think that's where we're gonna have to end it it's just uh, inventory stuff on the uh, DMS overview
So we'll continue on to that. Because sometimes the tutorial doesn't want to continue when you're actually doing things correctly. So we're going to start going to the next part, which is uh, we're going to do the, the lighting overview, which is the, the camera for the A10. And then we can finally start working out on the actual unguided and guided bombs. <clears throat> All right. Welcome to the training lesson on the use of the ANAAQ-28 Lighting 2 Targeting Pod. I've engaged the autopilot to maintain altitude and heading. Pay attention to the airspeed and manage the throttle to stay above 200 knots throughout this mission. There we go. It's fixing my face a little bit. The targeting pod provides you with the ability to conduct visual target search and designation for weapons delivery at long ranges and day and night time conditions. The Lighting 2 features three live video modes, charge couple device or CCD, and a white hot or black hot forward looking infrared flare. The pod can also function in laser spot search and laser spot track modes to track a laser designator from another source on the ground or in the air. Let's examine the air to ground page accessed by OSB2. Now we're utilizing the TGP the is now in air-to-ground mode and displaying video. To make the TGP our soy, press and hold the Hotas Coolie Hat right command or the K key on the keyboard. There we go. That's how you know it's highlighted and it's soyed. Let's review the main features of the TGP display. The center of the display is dominated by the crosshairs and brackets. The brackets indicate the volume of visible area in narrow field of view mode. Immediately to the right of the crosshairs is the yardstick, which indicates the ground distance covered by the right half of the crosshair. The bottom right corner indicates the slant range to the center of the crosshairs. The upper right corner indicates the north arrow, which is stabilized to the ground plane and indicates bearing due north. Press the spacebar key to proceed. Alright, very simple. Going around the edges of the display, the top left corner indicates the current field of view and zoom level. OSB 1 through 4 select TGP pages. The top right corner indicates the current video mode. OSB 5 toggles LSS mode. OSB 6 selects between laser and IR pointer and both designation modes. The bottom of the display indicates current location coordinates. Finally, the bottom left corner indicates the attitude reference symbol and clock. Press OSB1 to enter the control page and access additional options. OSB1. It's actually a pretty useful little icon. This is uh, the reference of your aircraft. That's hilarious, I did that. Starting with the right side of the display, OSB 7 toggles between latitude, longitude, and MGRS coordinate systems for current location indication. OSB 8 toggles latch on and off modes. In latch off mode, when the laser is fired manually by pressing the hotel's pinky button, it will only fire as long as the button is pressed down. In latch on mode, the laser will be switched on and off with each press of the button. Note that default profiles for guided munitions will be set for automatic laser operation. OSB 9 toggles between metric, US, and off settings for the yardstick. OSB 17 and 18 are used to enter the laser codes for the laser designator and LSS mode using the UFC to enter the code. Finally, OSB 20 is used to enter an advisory alert altitude. Press OSB 1 to return to the air to ground main page. OSB 1. Main page. Oh, that's the one thing, man. I mean, I click it, and he doesn't want to. He doesn't realize I clicked it. You see, so I gotta double click it. 
so he can realize that I actually clicked OSB1. Okay, now for the fun part. Try to slew the pot around. Move the line of sight down into either side using the whole test slew control switch or the semicolon, comma, period, and forward slash keys on the keyboard. Watch the HUD and TAD displays to see the TGP LOS yeah. diamond move to indicate its position over the terrain. Right there. You may need to zoom the TAD display out to see the TGP diamond. Also, watch the situation awareness cue on the TGP display, the small square dot. This cue indicates the TGP LOS to either side and down relative to the nose of the aircraft. So I'm slewing it. Very simple, very easy stuff here. And you can see it here on the actual uh, heads up display. Notice that when you stop slewing, the TGP enters area track mode. In this mode, the pond is tracking a general area picture and not any individual object. Try switching this to point tracking mode by pressing the whole task team as up short command or left control plus up arrow keys on the keyboard. There we go. So I switch to point tracking. In point tracking mode, the pond is tracking a specific object, including a moving one. If tracking is lost due to masking or other line of sight obstructions, area and point tracking modes are discontinued and replaced by INR inertial A or INR P modes respectively. Press the space bar key to proceed. Alright, very simple. If you guys have any questions, let me know. One of the main advantages offered by the A10C upgrade is the integration of avionics components that allow the pilot to quickly locate, identify, and prosecute targets from long range with precision munitions. I've set waypoint 4 in close proximity to some targets, so we can try some additional functions of the TGP. Set your steer point for waypoint 4 using the UFC steer rocker key. You can see it. I just switched it. This is a very good way when you have this soid and you want to switch between waypoints. Now press hold test China hat aft long or C on the keyboard to automatically slew the TGP to the steer point. You should see a large X type target range. You so, saw it's soyed to the next location is what it just did. So let me just fix the camera. So I do it. <laughs> the guy still doesn't realize that I soyed over to it. Press the whole task China hat right. forward short command or the V key on the keyboard to set the TGP to narrow field of view. So it's at wide and this is narrow. You can also zoom the video picture. Press and hold the whole task Demus up command or home key on the keyboard to zoom in toward the target. Now press the whole task boat switch forward command or right alt plus right arrow keys on the keyboard to select flare B hot video mode. You can also try the hot test boat switch aft command or right alt plus left arrow keys on the keyboard to select white hot mode. Switches between the flare modes. Very simple, very easy to do. Now choose a target and initiate either area or point track. An M indication on the TGP display below the crosshairs indicates a masking obstruction. Tracking may not be possible in this case. If this occurs, you may need to turn the nose more on target. So it's very easy point track so if it starts you can now moving, press the whole task team is up long command or left control plus up arrow keys on the keyboard to make this point your new speed this can be a very useful function if you are carrying mavericks as you could then initiate a slave all to speed command and the mavericks would be automatically slewed to this point there we go so it pretty much does like a uh, secondary waypoint <clears throat> You can also create a mark point at this location to store in the CDU database. Press the whole task team as right short command or left control plus right arrow key command on the keyboard to create mark point A. Oops. Wrong one. This concludes the training flight on the ANAAQ-28 Lighting 2 targeting pod. You can continue to practice using the targeting pod over the target range. But yeah, so very simple on how to use the camera itself, uh, slewing it, zooming in, switching between points. Uh, very useful thing to know, especially when you be utilizing things like the guided bombs, Mavericks, which very much utilize this camera. So now that we went through this tutorial, we're going to start moving on to the unguided mission. So let's step over to that side. 
So next up is unguided rockets. And this one's pretty fun, actually. Pretty cool tutorial. Now we're get, starting to get into the interesting parts of uh, learning your aircraft. Once I get all these done and out of the way, then I'll start working on doing the campaign and actual submissions and eventually join some servers. Alright, next up. Welcome to the training flight on the employment of unguided rockets and the GAL 8A gun against stationary and mobile ground targets. In this lesson, we'll review the HUD indications for gun and rocket employment, and then you'll have some range time to try a few strafing runs. Before taking off, let's configure some settings for the sortie. First, set the FC to test mode by right-clicking once so we can set up some gun options. Test mode brings up the main menu on the HUD. I'll just lower that. Use the select rocker me. key to scroll down to the weapons page and press the enter key to select it. Give me a moment. Where are you? It's this guy. There we go. So weapons mode. And then enter. Now press the enter key once again to enter the 30 millimeter page. Let me zoom in so it's easy for you guys to see. 30 meter, meter page. Enter. Press the data rocker key to set the ammo type to combat mix because Service. we are carrying live ammo today. That's then scroll down mix. to the min out setting and use the data rocker key again to set the minimum altitude to 500 feet. When finished, scroll down to store and press enter to exit this menu. Exit the previous menu using the exit line. Oh. So 500. After that, click on store. And exit. You can now set the IFSI switch back to on by left clicking once. There we go. Fix my face a little bit Let's here. also take a look at the DSMS to review our payload. Our Press key. OSB 14 on the left MFCD. Oh, you know why? Because I think it's this one. It's, that's the guy that I need to actually lower. We are carrying a total of four LAU-68 rocket pods. These are loaded on stations 2 and 3 and 9 and 10. And three, Let's nine, adjust two. some release parameters. Press OSB 1 to enter the profile main page. Press OSB 19 to select the profile. And then press OSB 3 to enter the profile control page. Press the OSB 6 rotary to set the release type to ripple pairs. Set the ripple quantity to 3 by using the 3 key on the UFC, followed by the ripple quantity rotary on OSB 8. Press OSB 3 to save the profile changes. There we go. 3, save. Let's now bring up the TAD page for takeoff. We are now ready to proceed with the flight. Takeoff runway heading for waypoint 2. Climb to 6,000 feet. Alright, let's make sure flaps are at 20%. Or, there we go. Throttle up. And off. Take off wheels. Wheel steering. All right, start slowly pulling up at a 10 degree pitch. Gears up, flaps up. Maintain 180 knots in the climb. Fix my headset a little bit there. Zoom out on the map a little Let's bit. Let's set the master arm and gun pack switches on the AHCP to arm. 
be ready for a slight stick forward input from the flight control system as precision attitude control is engaged. Yeah, as soon as I turned on PAC, you can see that. PAC will help keep the aircraft stable when the first stage of the trigger is depressed. This will help minimize pitch and yaw moments during cannon fire and achieve a tighter shot grouping around the gun pepper. It's picking up elevation while we're doing this. Following the waypoint, as you can see here, it's kind of hard to see maybe, but that's where I'm heading. Level off at 6,000 feet and maintain max engine power for waypoint 2. Alright. Just gonna start heading to 6,000. Zoom in a little bit better so you can see this. Start leveling out in a little bit. Around 500. All right, it's a good time to start leveling out. Autopilot is on. Let's review the HUD indication relevant to gun employment. If not currently set. Make sure the HUD is in guns mode by pressing the whole task master mode button or M key on the keyboard. So we're in guns mode right now. As you can see with the pipper. The gun bore line cross is displayed above the center of the HUD. This cross represents the longitudinal axis of the gun. You may have to turn slightly off course to see the GBL cross. See, I'll zoom in. The gun ammo type and amount remaining are displayed in the data block of the left corner of the HUD. This currently indicates right CM1150 for 1,150 rounds of combat mix. That's uh, your ammo and the type, combat mix. The A10C features four air-to-ground gun sight reticle options. The default and most informative reticle is the CCIP gun reticle, currently displayed on the HUD. Press the numpad asterisk key to zoom in on the HUD for a closer view of the gun sight. <laughs> I don't think I need to get that close, but yeah. So that's what he's talking about right there. The main features of the CCIP gun reticle are the pipper dot in the center of the reticle and the unwinding range bar around the circumference. The four hash marks at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions reference the slant range to the target in thousands of feet. When in range, the range bar unwinds counterclockwise. For example, yeah. if the range bar is at the bottom of the reticle, the slant range in feet is 6,000. You'll see it start opening like The CCIP that. gun reticle also features a numerical indication of the slant range to target in nautical miles below the reticle. Finally, Two moving target index marks inside the reticle indicate the aiming lead required for a moving target traveling at 20 knots in a perpendicular direction to the pipper line of sight. These are currently latched to the outside limit of the reticle at 3 and 9 o'clock positions due to the high slant range. Set your steer point for waypoint 3 and let's head back inland. I'm going to disengage the autopilot so you can make the turn. Face. Should be disengaging. Autopilot is off. You have control. Bank and pull. There we go. Keep try to keep a level flight here. Autopilot Warning, is on. autopilot. Make sure the HUD is set as soy using the HOTAS Cooley Hat up command or U on the keyboard. Press the HOTAS DMS right command or page down on the keyboard to switch the gun sight to the CCIP gun cross. So, right. The CCIP gun cross is a more compact version of the CCIP gun reticle. So it provides the same aim accuracy but is less obtrusive on the HUD and does not include the moving target index marks. Press the HOTAS DMS right command or page down on the keyboard again to select the 4812 gun reticle. The 4812 gun reticle is a degraded version of the CCIP gun reticle. It provides three impact point peppers inside the reticle for the preset ranges of 4,000, 8,000, and 12,000 feet. Normally, you would only use this gun sight if accurate target elevation data was not available for a CCIP solution. Press the HOTAS DMS right command or page down on the keyboard to select the 4,000 foot gun cross sight. 4,000 foot cross. The 4,000 foot gun cross presets a gun solution for a range of 4,000 feet. 
Once again, this would normally be used only in cases of inaccurate target elevation data preventing a CCIP solution. All gun sights will indicate a minimum range Q as a triangular index to the right of the reticle when you are within 5 seconds of the minimum altitude set in the FC 30mm menu. If you recall, we set this to 500 feet. The MRC will appear on level with the top of the reticle when you are within 5 seconds of the minimum altitude and move down to be on level with the bottom of the reticle when you are 5 seconds below the minimum altitude. Press the HOTAS DMS right command or page down on the keyboard again to return to the CCIP gun reticle. Now we're back. Let's bring up CCIP mode to review HUD indication used for unguided rockets. Press the HOTAS master mode button once or the M key on the keyboard. Press the HOTAS DMS right command or page down on the keyboard to select rockets as the active profile. The rocket CCIP reticle is very similar to the CCIP gun reticle, except it will not utilize the moving target index kids. marks. An RKT indication is added to the bottom of the reticle to identify this as a rocket site. When employing rockets, the HUD continues to display a gun solution using a CCIP gun cross site. This allows you to quickly follow a rocket attack with a gun strafe in the same path. Mm -hmm. Additional indication on the HUD when using rockets includes the time of fall numeric at the top of the data block in the bottom left corner of the HUD. This currently reads 20 for 20 seconds. Set your steer point for waypoint 4 and let's turn toward the range. I'm going to disengage the autopilot so you can make the turn. Autopilot is off. You have control. Turn into it. Try to keep a level with the flight. And there we go. Waypoint 4 is set up over the target range. A number of targets are positioned for rocket and gun fire. Your targets will be marked with smoke markers for each pass. Alright, so this is going to be the fun part. Get to finally use some live ammunition. As we approach the range, bring up the DSMS page on the left MFCD by pressing OSB 14. Your first target will be a group of stationary trucks set up for a rocket pass on the southwest corner of the range array. The target is now marked with red smoke and you are cleared hot. Alright. Press OSB 8 and 18 to deselect the stations from the active profile in case you need a second try. All right, let's As see you approach to within 4 nautical miles, reduce power and begin to dive toward the target. The range bar will begin to unwind as you fly within weapons range. Keep the pepper on the target and open fire when within 2 nautical miles. Press and hold the trigger to fire the entire ripple quantity. Do not target fixate. As soon as the attack is complete, pull up and away from the target toward the water and climb to regain altitude. All right, easy way to know on the HUD you see right there. We're within the four nautical miles, so pull back. And we're going to start dropping towards them. Good hits on those targets. Come off the target to the west toward the water and climb to 3,000 feet. We'll do a gun pass next. Some good hits there. Switch to Guns Mode by pressing the HOTAS Master Mode button or the M key on the keyboard. Target 2 will be a group of stationary APCs on the northeast corner of the range array. 
The target is now marked with red smoke. Roll in on the target and strike down upon it with great vengeance and furious anger. Yo, let's go get him. I'm gonna come off on the right side here so I can turn into him. Pull back on throttle, turn into him. Love these guns. Looks like that was a good hit on those targets. Pull up. Climb pull to 3,000 feet for a final gun pass against a moving target. That was a good straight run. Your final target will be a group of two vehicles. The target is moving clockwise around the target array. Target position now marked with red smoke. Cleared hot. There we go. Get into position here. Let's drop on them. Reduce power. Level out. Good hit Pull up. Target. Pull up. Climb out to 3,000 feet and level out. Full throttle. Gain some altitude now. You always want to have these guys on a slant so you can always have an eye on them. It's one of the things I gotta practice. Keep practicing. You always want to keep an eye on your threats. Never keep them on your blind spots. That was a good one too. Alright, we'll level out. You gotta keep a good airspeed. So Rockets can also be employed in CCRP mode by designating a SPI over the target using the HUD TDC, the TAD cursor, or the TGP. This would allow you to engage from a longer range or even employ a lofting trajectory to reach targets at longer range, but the accuracy of such an attack will be diminished significantly. We'll try using CCRP mode with free fall and precision guided munitions instead. This concludes the training lesson on the use of the gun and unguided rockets against stationary and moving ground targets. Nice. Perfect. So now we can actually move on to the next one. Getting through these pretty quickly. Hey, by the way, thanks guys for you guys uh, watching the video, uh, the stream. If you guys have any questions, uh, I'm not extremely knowledgeable, but I do know quite a bit so far. And I've read the manual, I've been reading the manual for the A-10. So, I'm starting to get accustomed to how to utilize the A-10 very well and efficiently. I think what I'm going to do as well, for you, those of you guys are actually interested, is uh, put in the description the PDF download for the actual flight manual. It's actually a really good read. Hey, if you guys are liking my, my stream, let me know. Hopefully it's enjoyable. <laughs> Alright, so let's get the next one going here. Welcome to the training lesson on the employment of unguided bombs using CCIP and CCRP master modes. I've engaged the autopilot to maintain altitude and heading. Pay attention to the airspeed and manage the throttle to stay above 200 knots throughout this mission. Literally doing a crash course today, getting all the guided bombs and got unguided out of the way. A lot to learn. A lot to learn. Set the TAD range to 40 nautical miles. To do this, first make the TAD soy by pressing OSB 15, and then press the whole test Demus down command or the end key on the keyboard three times. Three. Sure you'd like to go a little further out. 
We're far. <laughs> we got a long way to go. It's a lot that he's gonna teach us right now. I gotta actually click it because he's dumb. Doesn't realize it actually. Now change the HUD back to soy by pressing the hold task coolie hat up command or the U key on the keyboard. The A10C can be armed with Mark 82 500 pound and Mark 84 2000 pound low drag general purpose LDGP free fall bombs. In addition, the Mark 82 air high drag version of the basic Mark 82 was available for retarded delivery at low altitudes. Finally, the CBU-87 Combined Effects Munitions CEM cluster bomb is available for use against lightly armored area targets, such as concentrations of vehicles. Let's open the DSMS page now with OSB-14 to review our payload for this flight. There we go. We are carrying six Mark 82s loaded on triple ejector racks, tier, on stations 3 and 9, and four Mark 82 airs on stations 4, 5, 7, and 8. And Press nine. OSB-1 to enter the profile main page. Now press OSB-19 to select the Mark 82 profile and then press OSB-3 to enter the profile control page. Press OSB-6 to set the release mode to PRS, pairs. With this setting, each press of the weapon's release button will unload a single Mark 82 from each of the tier stations on both sides of the aircraft. Once the release mode is set to pairs, press OSB-16 to enter the profile settings page. On the profile settings page, OSB-20 is used to select the safe escape maneuver, SIM, currently set to CLM, climb. It's important to remember that when the mission starts on the ground, either a cold start on the ramp or a hot start on the runway, the default SIM will usually be set to none. In that case, you will not be able to get a valid CCIP solution. So you you set should it. set the SIM to either CLM, TRN, turn, or TLT, turn level turn, prior to entering the combat area. The profile settings page also allows you to set the bomb desired time of fall, DESTOF, with OSB 19, and minimum release altitude, MINALT, with OSB 18. These settings will determine the positions of the minimum range staple, MRS, and desired release cue, DRC, of the CCIP solution. We'll have a chance to view these indications in a few minutes. Press the spacebar key to proceed to the next step. Alright. Space barred. Let's set the minimum release altitude to 1,500 feet. To do this, first enter 1500 into the UFC scratch pad. Then press OSB 18 to store the value in the DSMS. So I entered it. Here press OSB 3 to save the changes to this profile. Save. Let's now configure the Mark 82 errors by pressing OSB 19 to select the MK 82 AHI profile and then press OSB 3 to enter the profile control page. We'll make a number of changes to this profile. Press OSB 6 to set the release mode to Ripple Single. This will release the bombs individually in sequence. Single. Set the ripple quantity to 2 by entering 2 into the UFC scratch hmm. pad followed by OSB 8. Press OSB 10 to change the HUD mode for this profile to CCRP. Note that the default fuse setting for NT, nose tail, on OSB 7 will result in a deployed chute for a high drag delivery. Leave this setting as is so we can try a high drag CCRP delivery from low altitude. To release the Mark 82 air as a low drag bomb, you would change the fuse setting to nose. Also note the impact interval setting of 75 feet on OSB 9 which you can change by entering a different value through the UFC. Press OSB 16 to enter the profile settings page. Okay. <clears throat> Come on, sir. Keep up with me. Set the minimum release altitude to 200 feet by entering 200 into the UFC scratch pad, followed by OSB 18. Press OSB 3 to save the changes to this profile. There we go. Press OSB 1 to return to the DSMS status page. We're back in the middle. Set the master mm -hmm. arm on the AHC panel to train by right clicking the switch twice. That's how you know you're in training. 
Bombs are deployed using either CCIP, Continuously Computed Impact Point, or CCRP, Continuously Computed Release Point HUD modes. Put plainly, CCIP indicates the calculated point of the bomb impact on the ground, while CCRP indicates a desired weapon release point in the air. Of the two modes, CCIP is the most straightforward, requiring only for the pilot to place the pipper on the target and pickle the weapon. However, CCIP is also problematic in that it requires a significant dive angle for the reticle to become visible on the HUD. This brings you closer to the enemy and, often just as deadly, the ground. To begin working with CCIP, select the Mark 82 profile by pressing the Select Down Rocker key on the UFC. Alternatively, you can press the Hold Task Demon's Right Command or Page Down key on the keyboard. CCIP indication is now visible on the HUD as a dashed line, yeah. called a Projected Bomb Impact Line, okay. P-Bill. Yeah. Dashed yeah. indication means the pipper is below the HUD field of view. To see the reticle with pipper, we'll perform a dive in a minute. Before we try this, Slip let's review there. some of the important elements of CCIP indication. You may want to have the flight manual open to reference CCIP illustrations. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. Hey, thanks for subscribing. Oh no. Alright, so let's continue to the next part. The P-Bill is a theoretical prediction of pipper track along the ground under current flight parameters. A convenient way to bring the pipper on target is to run the target down the P-Bill. The Amy reticle includes the pipper dot in the center, an unwinding range bar to indicate slant range to the impact point in thousands of feet, and a minimum range carrot, MRC. Along the P-Bill, you will see the minimum range staple, MRS, which has to remain above the reticle to maintain a valid CCIP solution. If a desired time of fall is set in the weapon profile, a desired release cue will also be indicated on the P-Bell. Keeping the DRC over the target as you dive toward it will guide you toward a release point that matches the time of fall set in the profile. Press okay. the space bar key to proceed when ready. So I'm going to be performing a dive in a moment. All it is is that you have to keep this in line, you point down, and you'll start seeing the, the reticle for it. And we'll, we'll see that in a moment when the computer decides to actually continue here. You hit it one more time. Now we'll perform a dive so you can see the CCIP reticle come into view. Minimize acceleration in the dive by reducing engine power and opening the speed brakes if necessary. Recover above 3,000 feet. Whenever you're ready, reduce engine power and press the spacebar key to proceed. I will disengage the autopilot so you can begin the dive. Alright, so we're going to be diving, recovering at 3,000 feet. So let's pull back on throttle and hit the spacebar. Autopilot is now off. You have control. Pitch the nose down between minus 30 to minus 40 degrees. We should be seeing that reticle pop in a moment. To maximize accuracy of the CCIP solution, it's best to minimize acceleration in the dive and maintain a stable flight path. Try to maintain the TVV on a point on the ground above the target. This will result in the CCIP pipper crawling toward the target. Pull up, Do not attempt pull up. to keep the CCIP reticle stable over one point as this will produce negative G and cause a problem. If you wish, you can try a couple more dry runs using CCIP, but you will need to recover some altitude first. Press the spacebar key when you are ready to proceed to the next lesson topic. We'll do that one more time because uh, I was moving the, the nose way too much. So we're going to attempt that one more time so you can see. You can actually see the reticle open up as you get closer to your target indicator. So let's, let's, get, up, let's get some more altitude here. Let's get close to 10,000. And then we'll go for another dive. Last thing you want to do is <laughs> try to drop too low and then become a turn, in, turn into a pancake. All right, let me start leveling out because my, my airspeed is way too slow. This is pretty good enough though. So throttle back, let's try this again. You should see the reticle pop in a moment. Get the air brakes going. There it is. You can see it unwind too. This is when you would release and then want to point up again. 
There we go. So let's go to the next lesson. Next, we will consider CCI PCR, consent to release mode. Maintain heading for waypoint 2, MSN 002. Climb to 6,000 feet and maintain airspeed above 200 knots. Alright. Hopefully you guys are understanding that. If you don't, just let me know. I can explain it a little bit better, but it's pretty straightforward on how the CCIP works. All it is is point down towards the, towards the target. You'll see the reticle. It'll start unwinding. There's a little notch where that's the indicator for releasing your weapon. So if you pass it, it's not going to let you release it and you're going to have to abort and retry it again. Let's level out. Autopilot is Warning, on. Autopilot. To overcome some of the limitations of CCIP mode, the A10C features two CCIP CR consent to release modes. In CR mode, the CCIP reticle is always visible on the HUD. Whereas in standard CCIP, the reticle disappears out of view when the impact point is below the HUD. In CR mode, it remains dashed and latched to the bottom of the HUD. This allows you to designate a target by placing the pipper over it and perform the attack by pressing down and holding the weapons release button. Doing so adds indication to the HUD to guide you to the desired weapons release point. Weapons are released automatically as you pass the release point as long as the weapon release button is held down. CR mode comes in two flavors, 3.9 and 5 mil. We'll try using 3.9 mode as it allows more error in the delivery. CR modes are enabled in the IFC test menu. Right click the IFC switch on the AHCP once to set it to test. There you go. I'm going to bring up the, the HUD here. Press the UFC data rocker key to change the CCIP consent OPT option from off to 3.9. Now set the IFC switch mm -hmm. back to on by left clicking the IFC switch once. There we go. Press the HOTAS master mode button or M key on the keyboard to return the HUD to CCIP mode. Note the 3.9 indication on the HUD is the weapon release mode. I will now disengage the autopilot so you can practice using CR mode. To see CCIP CR indication on the HUD, take the nose down about 5 degrees. Warning, autopilot. The dashed CCIP indication is now visible on the HUD with the reticle latched to the bottom. You can press right control plus right shift plus numpad A to shift your view up to better see the reticle. Place yeah, the pipper over a desired target point and press and hold the weapon release button to see the CR post designate indication. This one I am not 100% sure on how to make this one work. The indication is now solid. There it is. An as mysterious line ASL with the 5 mil solution queue and time to release oh. numeric TTRN is added to the HUD. Fly the aircraft so the P bill and ASL remain aligned. As you approach the target, the TTRN will begin the countdown to release and the solution queue will move down the HUD. Your objective is to fly the aircraft so that the solution queue runs down the P-bill and passes through the center of the CCIP reticle. You can now continue to practice targeting using CCIP CR mode. Press the space bar key when you are ready to proceed to the next topic. Alright, let's try that again. I do believe... Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on this one. I'm actually a little confused on this one. But I tend not to use that mode too often. So we're going to continue the next lesson, but I might come back to this one just to reiterate how, how that one works. Because I'm actually not 100% aware on how that one works too much. CCIP CR5 mil mode functions identically to 3.9 mode except that the weapons are released only if the CCIP reticle pipper passes directly through the 5 mil solution queue. Next, we'll take a look at CCRP mode. Select the MK82AHI profile by pressing the Hotest Demis Right command or the Page Down key on the keyboard. 
Press the Hold Tabs Master Mode button or M key on the keyboard to select CCRP mode. There we go. CCRP indication is much like CCIP CR post designate, with the ASL and 5 mil solution cue providing aiming cues toward the desired weapon release point for the target. The difference is that in CCRP mode, the target is marked by a sensor point of interest speed using any of the available sensors. We'll try using the HUD to designate a speed using the target designation cue, TDC. Press the space bar key to proceed when ready. Hmm. This is where I'm getting some of my issues. I'm not 100% sure why I'm getting an invalid signature for the CCRP. Wondering why. Hold the hope tab slew control down or the period key on the keyboard to slew the HUD TDC down to the highlighted box on the HUD. Designate this point as the speed by holding down the hope tab's team is up command or left control plus up arrow keys on the keyboard. Alright, let's do that. CCRP go, indication is now visible on the HUD with the familiar azimuth steering line and 5 mil solution cue. As you approach the target, the solution cue and TTRN timer will move down the ASL and the weapons will release as they pass through the CCRP reticle while the weapons release button is held down. Just a little quick thing. So I just literally figured that out. So the reason why I was getting the invalid is because you had to have a point of location set as a speed. For it to actually work, if it's not lo if it's not set to point of interest, like you see right there, that's the reason why it was invalid. Is because I didn't have a location set. So just a, just a little way of enlightening, because I actually just realized that just now why I was getting the invalid sign. Because we set up the MK82 AHI profile for a high drag delivery, the release point will be virtually above the target in this case. You can try designating other speed locations if you wish. Press the space bar key to proceed to the next topic. So I just learned something new today on troubleshooting. <laughs> it's a nice view up here though. I think I can see my house from up here. <laughs> oh man, he takes forever to go between the Well now fly to the weapons range to drop some live ordnance. Hold down the hold task team is down command or left control plus down arrow keys on the keyboard to reset the speed to the steer point. Set the master arm to on by left clicking the switch twice. Alright. There we go. Press the hold task team is up command or home key on the keyboard to set your steer point for waypoint 3, range. Navigate to the weapons range. You will want to gain some altitude to practice CCIP runs. The weapons range is set up with a number of target arrays. Practice dropping Mark 82s and Mark 82 errors in CCIP, CCIP CR, and CCRP modes. Remember, we set the Mark 82 error profile for a high drag delivery, so you can use CCRP mode to designate the target with the HUD TDC and deliver the bombs at low altitude and level flight. There we go. got quite a little bit of distance to get we have to get, make it to the range you are approaching the weapons range in general it's best to keep the target at your 10 or 2 o'clock position as you approach this allows you to keep your eyes on the target to better time your roll in for the dive this concludes the training portion of the flight targets are now marked with red smoke and you are cleared in Alright, so we'll test out the CCRP. This is the easiest one because you don't actually have to turn in. CCIP, you have to actually turn into what you're trying to shoot at. So this is actually really, I like this one. This is a lot easier to use. And we'll, I'll show you as we get close enough. What it is, what's going to end up happening is that when you start getting close enough, I believe within 20 seconds, 
you'll start seeing this drop. And once it gets to five seconds is when you want to hold the weapon release button. And that that's when it starts to drop the your ordinance. If you do it late, it won't drop it. And then you'll have to do another pass. Warning, autopilot. Don't know why you did that. There we go. So should be seeing it drop as we get closer. We're still around two nautical miles, so there it is. See? It's already counting down. 13, 12. So at five seconds is when you want to start holding the weapon release button. Seven, six, and five. Ah, see, so I did it. I did it too late. So that just right there shows you. If you do it too a little too late, it won't let you. So we're gonna make another pass here and try it again. So we'll see if we can make another turnaround. The way I like to do this is I'll watch the nautical mile distance that I'm flying away right now. I'll wait until around five nautical miles and I'll do another turnaround. That way we have a, a good enough distance to retry this again. Let's fix my head in here. Hmm. Not 100% sure how to fix that. That's actually a new thing. I'm not sure how to reset. I don't know if that's going to end up getting in my way when I'm trying to release the next payload. Alright. Let's turn in. Try this again. Let's see if we can't get this to work right. If not, we'll have to run a CCIP mode and see if that'll make any kind of difference. Yeah, I'm not sure how to reset that. Might be jammed. I don't know. We'll see. Should be getting close. There we go. Huh. Let me test something. Whoa. Yeah, see, that didn't work. So we're going to turn around and try this again, but with the other mode, CCIP. So for a quick turnaround, this should be a little easier to do. Alright, turn into it. Pull up, pull up. There we go, just dropped one. Nice run. That was a miss. <laughs> Try it again. Try to get a little bit better on that one. Let's try that again.
Pull up! Pull up! That was a very horrible bank I did. Now let's get some altitude here because I think that's really what's messing me up is I'm trying to do this at a short altitude and I'm not skilled enough to get a a stable flight in time. So we're gonna get closer to eight, nine thousand. We're gonna run like eight to nine thousand feet. We'll try it again. Still, I gotta look that up in the manual to see how. What do I have to do to get around that? The release abort. Try to get some more altitude here. We'll try it again. All right, pull back. Pull up, yeah. pull up. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong right now. Besides for, I don't know how to reset. Yeah, I'm not sure how to reset that. Let's go for one more pass here. As you can see, I'm still in a noob at this. But, it's how you learn, man. Learn through flip failure. Try this again. Throttle, flaps, come on, two, one, pull up, pull up, no, oh, still didn't want to drop that one. So I'm highly assuming it has to do with uh, the weapon release abort stopping me from utilizing uh, my ordnance. So we might end up having to redo this one. Well, that's the first one. Need more practice with that one. But that's pretty much what that is, is uh, teaching you how to utilize the guided bombs. Actually, you know what? Just because I'm going to do it one more time. I don't like uh, continuing knowing that I failed at it. So I'm going to have to do that one more time. Guided bombs are a lot easier. It's the unguided that are, are a pain in the butt. <laughs> at least for me. I need, to, I need to practice unguided more. 
Got it is super easy to to do. Oh, well, that was a fast one. All right, let's go. Welcome to the attention. training lesson on the employment of unguided bombs using CCIP and CCRP master modes. I've engaged the autopilot to maintain altitude and heading. Pay attention to the airspeed and manage the throttle to stay above 200 knots throughout this mission. I need to I need to at least do this. I feel like a failure right now, so I don't want to continue without learning and continuing with a failure, so hopefully this pass will get it right. Set the TAD range to 40 nautical miles. To do this, first make the TAD soy by pressing OSB 15, and then press the whole test Demus down command or the end key on the keyboard three times. Alright, I gotta do everything real slow. Now change the HUD back to soy by pressing the hold task coolie hat up command or the U key on the keyboard. Alright. Oh, the A10 is, it's not that hard to learn. The only, the only thing is, uh, when you're doing the tutorial, the, the guy doesn't want to do the things right. So even if, even if he did it right, it might detect it wrong. And I still have a lot to learn. Uh, like the aborting part. There, there, there has to be a way for me to reset it. I just don't know, and I have to read the manual again to see where that's at in the contest so I can uh, figure it out. But yeah, I haven't actually tried the Harrier, though, so that's, that's, that's interesting. The A10C can be armed with Mark 82 500 pound and Mark 84 2000 pound low drag general purpose LDGP free fall bombs. In addition, the Mark 82 Air High Drag version of the basic Mark 82 was available for retarded delivery at low altitudes. Finally, the CBU-87 Combined Effects Munitions CEM cluster bomb is available for use against lightly armored area targets, such as concentrations of vehicles. Let's open the DSMS page now with OSB-14 to review our payload for this flight. As you can see, I'm doing everything really slow because if I do things really fast, he's not going to detect it. So let's try to get this done perfectly we are carrying six mark 82's loaded on triple ejector racks tier on stations 3 and 9 and four mark 82 airs on stations 4 5 7 and 8 press OSB 1 to enter the profile main page alright profile main page now press OSB 19 to select the mark 82 profile and then press OSB 3 to enter the profile control page Page. Press OSB 6 to set the release mode to PRS, pairs. With this setting, each press of the weapon's release button will unload a single Mark 82 from each of the tier stations on both sides of the aircraft. Once the release mode is set to pairs, press OSB 16 to enter the profile settings page. And by the way, uh, Ross, I more than likely overlooked something. That's the reason why I failed the last try. So that's one of the biggest things when you're learning like A10C or any of the planes is take your time and try to pay attention to what they're trying to teach you because I've been through this tutorial a couple times and I can still make mistakes on the profile settings page OSB 20 is used to select the safe escape maneuver SIM currently set to CLM climb it's important to remember that when the mission starts on the ground either a cold start on the ramp or a hot start on the runway the default sim will usually be set to none. In that case, you will not be able to get a valid CCIP solution. You should set the sim to either CLM, TRN, turn, or TLT, turn level turn, prior to entering the combat area. The profile settings page also allows you to set the bomb desired time of fall, DESTOF, with OSB 19, and minimum release altitude, MINALT, with OSB 18. These settings will determine the positions of the minimal range staple, MRS, and desired release cue, DRC, of the CCIP solution. We'll have a chance to view these indications in a few minutes. Press the space bar key to proceed to the next step.
Let's set the minimum release altitude to 1,500 feet. To do this, first enter 1500 into the UFC scratch pad, then press OSB 18 to store the value in the DSMS. Press OSB 3 to save the changes to this profile. I'm going really slow because I'm trying to make sure he doesn't doesn't mess up my tutorial. Let's now configure the Mark 82 errors by pressing OSB 19 to select the MK82 AHI profile and then press OSB 3 to enter the profile control page. Oops. There you go. We'll make a number of changes to this profile. Press OSB 6 to set the release mode to Ripple Single. This will release the bombs individually in sequence. Set the ripple quantity to 2 by entering 2 into the UFC scratch pad, followed by OSB 8. Press OSB 10 to change the HUD mode for this profile to CCRP. Note that the default fuse setting for NT, nose tail, on OSB 7 will result in a deployed chute for a high drag delivery. Leave this setting as is so we can try a high drag CCRP delivery from low altitude. To release the Mark 82 Air as a low drag bomb, you would change the fuse setting to nose. Also note the impact interval setting of 75 feet on OSB 9, which you can change by entering a different value through the UFC. Press OSB 16 to enter the profile settings page. Oh, I think I went a little too fast for it. Yeah, it didn't copy. You didn't. You weren't able to paste what you were trying to write. Come on. See, this is what I mean. Uh, the computer can be so slow. So I clicked it, and I'm in the right page. Set the minimum release altitude there to 200 feet by entering 200 into the UFC scratch pad, followed by OSB 18. Press OSB 3 to save the changes to this profile. I literally have to wait for him to talk, and then click it. Press OSB 1 to return to the DSMS status page. Set the master arm on the AHC panel to train by right clicking the switch twice. Well, you can clear it. I think you can go into DMS, then inventory, then store where the error is. Then you can reload it. I, th I think it, I know exactly what you're talking about the inventory here. But I'll give that a shot. If I, if I do that again, I'll see if that'll work. So good looking out, Russ. Bombs are deployed using either CCIP, Continuously Computed Impact Point, or CCRP, Continuously Computed Release Point HUD modes. Put plainly, CCIP indicates the calculated point of the bomb impact on the ground, while CCRP indicates a desired weapon release point in the air. Of the two modes, CCIP is the most straightforward, requiring only for the pilot to place the pipper on the target and pickle the weapon. However, yeah. CCIP is also problematic in that it requires a significant dive angle for the reticle to become visible on the HUD. This brings you closer to the enemy and, often just as deadly, the ground. To begin working with CCIP, select the Mark 82 profile by pressing the Select Down Rocker key on the UFC. Alternatively, you can press the Hold Test Demon's Right Command or Page Down key on the keyboard. Alright, so let's give this a shot again. CCIP indication is now visible on the HUD as a dashed line, called a Projected Bomb Impact Line, PBIL. Dashed indication means the pipper is below the HUD field of view. To see the reticle with pipper, we'll perform a dive in a minute. Before we try this, let's review some of the important elements of CCIP indication. You may want to have the flight manual open to reference CCIP illustrations. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. All right. I do have the flight manual on my off screen, but since I'm using head tracking, I don't want to be jarring the screen too much by looking over to it. The PBIL is a theoretical prediction of pipper track along the ground under current flight parameters. A convenient way to bring the pipper on target is to run the target down the PBIL. The aiming reticle includes the pipper dot in the center, an unwinding range bar to indicate slant range to the impact point in thousands of feet, and a minimum range carrot, MRC. Along the PBIL, 
you will see the minimum range staple, MRS, which has to remain above the reticle to maintain a valid CCIP solution. If a desired time of fall is set in the weapon profile, a desired release cue will also be indicated on the P-Bell. Keeping the DRC over the target as you dive toward it will guide you toward a release point that matches the time of fall set in the profile. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. All right. <laughs> See, I hit the space bar and it's taking forever. You literally have to wait for him to say everything. Da, da, da. Now we'll perform a dive so you can see the CCIP reticle come into view. Minimize acceleration in the dive by reducing engine power and opening the speed brakes if necessary. Recover above 3,000 feet. Whenever you're ready, reduce engine power and press the spacebar key to proceed. I will disengage the autopilot so you can begin the dive. All right. Autopilot is now off. You have control. Pitch the nose down between minus 30 to minus 40 degrees. Let's fix my face real quick. All right. Pitch down to three, negative 30 degrees. To maximize accuracy of the CCIP solution, it's best to minimize acceleration in the dive and maintain a stable flight path. Try to maintain the TVV on a point on the ground above the target. This will result in the CCIP pipper crawling toward the target. Do not attempt to keep the CCIP reticle stable over one point as this will produce negative G and cause a problematic solution in weapon release. Level out. If you wish, you can try a couple more dry runs using CCIP, but you will need to recover some altitude first. Press the spacebar key when you are ready to proceed to the next lesson topic. Alright. Next, we will consider CCIP CR, consent to release mode. Maintain heading for waypoint 2, MSN 002. Climb to 6,000 feet and maintain airspeed above 200 knots. Alright, let's get to 6,000 and start leveling out. Autopilot is on. To overcome some of the limitations of CCIP mode, the A10C features two CCIP CR consent to release modes. In CR mode, the CCIP reticle is always visible on the HUD, whereas in standard CCIP, the reticle disappears out of view when the impact point is below the HUD. In CR mode, it remains dashed and latched to the bottom of the HUD. This allows you to designate a target by placing the pipper over it and perform the attack by pressing down and holding the weapons release button. Doing so adds indication to the HUD to guide you to the desired weapons release point. Weapons are released automatically as you pass the release point as long as the weapon release button is held down. CR mode comes in two flavors, 3.9 and 5 mil. We'll try using 3.9 mode as it allows more error in the delivery. CR modes are enabled in the IFC test menu. Right click the IFC switch on the AHCP once to set it to test. There we go. Is that test? Press the UFC data rocker key to change the CCIP consent OPT option from off to 39. Now set the IFC switch back to on by left clicking the IFC switch once. Now we're back. Press the hold task master mode button or M key on the keyboard to return the HUD to CCIP mode. Note the 39 indication on the HUD is the weapon release mode. I will now disengage the autopilot so you can practice using CR mode. To see CCIP CR indication on the HUD, take the nose down about 5 degrees. Right Dashed in CCIP indication is now visible on the HUD with the reticle latch to the bottom. You can press right control plus right shift plus numpad A to shift your view up to better see the reticle. Place the pipper over a desired target point and press and hold the weapon release button to see the CR post designate indication. There he goes. The indication is now solid. An as steering line, ASL, with the 5 mil solution queue and time to release numeric TTRN is added to the HUD. 
Fly the aircraft so the P-Bill and ASL remain aligned. As you approach the target, the TTRN will begin the countdown to release and the solution queue will move down the HUD. Your objective is to fly the aircraft so that the solution queue runs down the P-Bill and passes through the center of the CCIP reticle. You can now continue to practice targeting using CCIP CR mode. Press the space bar key when you are ready to proceed to the next topic. Okay, I think I did that pretty well, so let's move on. If the game lets me. Yeah, so that one you just have to aim a little bit down, you'll see the pipper, and then you hold the weapon's release. CCIP CR5 mil mode functions identically to 3.9 mode, except that the weapons are released only if the CCIP reticle pipper passes directly through the 5 mil solution queue. Next, we'll take a look at CCRP mode. Select the MK82 AHI profile by pressing the HOTAS DMS right command or the page down key on the keyboard. Press the HOTAS master mode button or M key on the keyboard to select CCRP mode. There you go. CCRP indication is much like CCIP CR post designate, with the ASL and 5 mil solution queue providing aiming cues toward the desired weapon release point for the target. The difference is that in CCRP mode, the target is marked by a sensor point of interest, speed, using any of the available sensors. We'll try using the HUD to designate a speed using the target designation queue, TDC. Press the space bar key to proceed when ready. Alright, so the reason why I did that is because you can't designate something in the water. They won't let you. Hold the HOTAS slew control down or the period key on the keyboard to slew the HUD TDC down to the highlighted box on the HUD. Designate this point as the speed by holding down the HOTAS TMIS up command or left control plus up arrow keys on the keyboard. CCRP indication is now visible on the HUD with the familiar asthma steering line in 5 mil solution queue. As you approach the target, the solution queue and TTRN timer will move down the ASL and the weapons will release as they pass through the CCRP reticle while the weapons release button is held down. Because we set up the MK82 AHI profile for a high drag delivery, the release point will be virtually above the target in this case. You can try designating other speed locations if you wish. Press the space bar key to proceed to the next topic. Alright. We know that much, so let's not... We're not to dilly-dally on that one too much. We'll now fly into the weapons range to drop some live ordnance. Hold down the HOTAS team is down command or left control plus down arrow keys on the keyboard to reset the speed to the steer point. Set the master arm to on by left clicking the switch twice. There we go. That was not a good thing to do while you're in the turn, by the way. That's what I forgot to do. There Press go. the hold Oops. test Demas up command or home key on the keyboard to set your steer point for waypoint 3, range. Navigate to the weapon's range. You will want to gain some altitude to practice CCIP runs. Yeah, I forgot to The weapon's range speed. is set up with a number of target arrays. Practice dropping Mark 82s and Mark 82 errors in CCIP, CCIP CR, and CCRP modes. Remember, we set the Mark 82 air profile for a high drag delivery 
so you can use CCRP mode to designate the target with the HUD TDC and deliver the bombs at low altitude and level flight. A CCRP mode designate the target with the HUD TDC and deliver bombs at low altitude and level flight. So maybe you have to be at a lower altitude, maybe that's what it is. It's actually a pretty decently low altitude though. Okay, so it's automatically switching it for me, which is nice. What we're going to do, we're going to lower our altitude just in case. For, at least for this pass. Just to make sure everything is how it should be. Which shouldn't matter. Hopefully. Especially if you use You the are CCR. approaching the weapons range. In general, it's best to keep the target at your 10 or 2 o'clock position as you approach. This allows you to keep your eyes on the target to better time your roll-in for the dive. This concludes the training portion of the flight. Targets are now marked with red smoke and you are cleared in. Hmm. So what, what I'm trying to realize here is do I have to have that little slant down? Or can I just be directly above it? Let's find out here. Alright, once you... Uh, I can't read it while I'm making a bank. Once you hold down the weapon release button, at the 5 seconds before, you need to let go off the button for the bomb to release once it's on the dot. That might be why. Yeah. I think you are right, sir. And I think I flew completely over it, so that's not going to help. Let's go level flight. Yeah, <laughs> I think I know what I'm doing wrong. So I'm doing it the wrong way. I'm trying to release without actually looking at it. I think I still have to look at it with this weapon loadout. So let's test out what you were saying earlier. So. Clear stat. Oh, what do I do? <laughs> I think I did a boo-boo. I think I boo-booed this one. That was it. <laughs> uh, this was rack one. It should have been these guys, right? So I think I just dropped the payload by accident. Clear stat. Check loadout store detected. Yeah, I think I dropped it by accident. So what you said earlier did work. So like when I when I had that little error issue, all you had to do is go to inventory. Once you're in inventory, you go to acknowledge. That's what the ACK is. It's acknowledge it. So it declutters it. So whoops. Because my left, this is my left side. So that's weapon rack one, four, and three. That would mean... 
I think it was like one, four, and three. I think that was it. So I think I dropped whatever was, whatever was in that rack. I dropped it by accident. So that's a whoops. <laughs> so let's go back to the main menu here, and it's not too bad. Like all I have to do is just uh, reselect. So I could still retry this though. So we're still good here. I just jettisoned a pack. <laughs> Um, let me see. Yeah, it's, it's there. I don't think I... It's three and three. One, two, and three. That's right wing, left wing. Holy crap. <laughs> I think I jettisoned all my heirs. I have no heirs. Whoopsies. And I have a note. Uh, what? Where is that supposed to be? Message. I got a new. Did I get rid of it? I think I got rid of it. Nope. Still have the note. There we go. <laughs> uh, well, we're learning, learning things as we go. So let's uh, try the next one. I think I flew way out of range here. Yeah, I dropped all my airs, by the way. Uh, I somehow jettisoned them. So yeah, just so just a future tense. If you're if you're flying an A10 and you go to inventory and you click on it, don't click on clear. So I do believe clear station is jettisoning it. So don't do that. Cause every even though it says it's there, they're gone. They would have been in these. I believe they were supposed to be in that on these on this rack, and they're just gone. <laughs> Alright, so let's try the CCIP drop. Still got a long ways to go. We're six miles out, six nautical miles. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm yet to do the mission to do the training missions. <laughs> I'm trying to make these videos educational, but I guess failure is another way of being educational, right? Just a uh, monkey see monkey do situation. Don't do what I don't do the same thing I did. Learn from my mistakes. Yeah, and at the same time, this is another way of, if you run, it's run into the same issue as me, now you know how to get around it. Alright, close to it. We're about three. I'm going to wait until about two. Throttle back. There we go. There we go, we got the CCIP inbound. Oh my god. There we go. I don't believe I hit anything with that. Let's watch it drop. Yeah, that's way off the mark. We'll try it one more time. Woo, you heard that? That's crazy. That's what I that's crazy. We're so far away that the you can hear the explosion seconds after it hits. That's really cool. Alright. It's three. Because it dropped them in pairs. So we'll go again.
<laughs> At least it dropped. That's another good one. Let's try this again. The throttle back. Yeah, I'm having a little bit of trouble on this one. The crazy part is that off camera I practiced this and I didn't do nowhere near as bad as I'm right now. But this is pretty much how it works. The more I pr the more of this practice, the better I'll get on the accuracy and getting it down correctly. So we're going to try one more pass and then we're going to do the next tutorial. Cause I really want to get through the the ground stuff and the unguided stuff. Cause right now it's, I know how to utilize these, but it takes repetition to get it right. And I am a little too low for this, I believe. I think that one was on point. That was it. If I didn't get a if I didn't get a hit on this one, I'm gonna be a sad panda. Oh, landed right in front of them. All right. You know what? We're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. get into a, a loop here I got some hits there pull up pull up there we go falls fails that's why you got the Avenger Yeah, you're right. Just got to keep practicing those. Because uh, I'm really good with guided bombs. Unguided is the issue. So let's go to the next one here. And maybe I can uh, regain some of my pride. But yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. I got to practice more uh, doing unguided. So just need... Guided munitions and the Mavericks, and then that'll be the the end of the tutorial. These will go a lot faster because I know how to use these very, very easily and very well. So we shouldn't have an issue. Oh yeah, Th these are my. This is my favorite training. I love using the the lighting pod. And on top of that, Ross, if you if you play, uh, if you want to join me, every uh, and do some practices, just uh, you can give me your either your Steam ID, and we can uh, do some flybys, do some practice flights. Welcome to the training flight on the employment of precision guided munitions (PGM). In this lesson, we'll practice using the Lighting 2 Targeting Pod TGP to engage ground targets with laser and satellite guided bombs. I've engaged the autopilot to keep us level and on course. Manage the throttle to maintain airspeed above 200 knots. Press the space bar key when you are ready to begin. Alright. Gonna get a little bit back of my pride here. <laughs> that last tutorial was... Uh... It hurt me a little bit. Hurt me, hit my, hurt my insides a little. The A-10C is equipped with two types of PGM: laser-guided bomb (LGB) and inertially aided munition (IM). 
LGB munitions home in on the laser energy reflected from a target being painted by a laser designator, such as the one installed on the Lighting 2 targeting pod TGP. Oh, hey, give me one moment. I didn't think it was going to take this long. I'm going to go take a real, real quick uh, restroom break, and we'll continue with this stream. Are you playing on Steam? Yes, this is the Steam version of DCS World, which is pretty much the same thing. The only difference is that the website has other modules, maybe. But it doesn't matter because you can buy it from, if you have the Steam or the website version, it's really not, you can buy from either version, so it's not even a crazy thing. But yeah, give me one moment, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Apologize about that. Um, I was not expecting this stream to last about two hours. I was hoping to get all these modules done within an hour, but the the, the overview DMS took a little while just because you can't do anything except for listen to the guy. And those cut and the two runs we did with uh, unguided bombs really set me back. <laughs> so I apologize if the, for the stream being so long. But yeah. Um, it's, what do you say, Ross? Yeah, I use the standalone version, so direct from DCS. I'm looking to fly with others. As it gets boring on your own, what other modules do I have? Well, I have uh, the A10C. I have uh, Flaming Cliffs. or That one and the P51 module. I don't have all the other ones. I've had the game for a pretty long time and played for a little while and pretty much did the same thing as you where there's not you know if you don't have a lot of people to play with it does get rather boring and i had a couple buddies i used to do flight maneuvers and missions but they stopped playing but i decided to get back on this so yeah uh if you want to be able to fly together man i'll be totally down with that That sounds uh just uh if like if you have the the real version I mean the the website version I believe the way it works is uh you just have to direct connect to my to like if I create a server you just direct connect to my server so it's it's not a big deal if anything uh my YouTube name is my well I can always I can let you know because if you have Steam or not I can always just let you know in advance. Whenever I, I decide to do some flight missions and stuff, and we can do some cooperative flight missions. P, or from another source on the ground or in the air. This makes it possible for another platform to provide designation or buddy lays while the firing platform remains passive. The laser guided GBU's guided bomb unit carried by the A10C include the GBU 10 and GBU 12. These are essentially Mark 84 and Mark 82. Uh, just add me on Steam. Uh, it's a, my username's the same as the YouTube. So if you want to add me, just add me on Steam. General purpose unguided bombs equipped with a paved weight 2 LGB kit, which adds a laser seeker to the nose and a set of retractable control fins on the tail of the bomb. 
One advantage of the lighter GBU-12 is that up to three can be carried on triple ejector racks, tiers, on stations 3, 4, 8, and 9. Press the spacebar key to proceed. I'll add you on YouTube again tomorrow in the UK and so Ah, no worries. <laughs> IMs carried by the A-10C include the Joint Directed Attack Munition, JDAM, and the Wind Corrected Munition Dispenser, WCMD, often pronounced WICMED. Like the Paveway 2, JDAM is a GBU conversion of the Mark 82 and Mark 84 unguided bombs. However, JDAM utilizes a GPS receiver to determine target and own position. The advantage of using satellite navigation is that unlike optical systems, it is unaffected by weather conditions. It's also passive and provides a fire and forget capability to the firing platform, allowing more than one target to be engaged at a time. The A-10C is equipped with the GBU-31 2,000-pound JDAM and the GBU-38 500-pound JDAM. Press the spacebar key to proceed. But yeah, I hope you're enjoying the stream. <laughs> you're, you're like uh, watching early morning videos, huh? A little, little bit of coffee and uh, enjoying some... Uh, tutorials of me pretty much uh, destroying myself at this. <laughs> the CBU-103 WCMD is a conversion of the CBU-87 cluster bomb. An inertial navigation system, INS, is added to the weapon to provide autonomous guidance toward the target. Like the JDAM, this makes the weapon passive and provides fire and forget capability to the firing platform. Let's now review our payload on the DSMS page by pressing OSB 14 on the left MFCD. We are carrying two GBU-12s on stations 4 and 8, and two GBU-38s on stations 5 and 7. We are also carrying the Lighting 2 Targeting Pod TGP on station 2, and two Captive AIM 9Ms on station 11. Press OSB 1 to enter the profile main page. <laughs> Watching a midnight run is what you're doing. Press OSB 19 to cycle to the GBU-12 profile, and then press OSB 3 to enter the profile control page. Press OSB 10 to change the default profile to CCRP, then press OSB 16 to enter the profile settings page. There you go. The Auto LS Auto Laser Rotary on OSB 6 selects between automatic and manual laser firing. When set to on, the laser is fired automatically after weapon release. The LS time setting on OSB-17 sets the time in seconds before bomb impact for the laser to fire. When set to zero, the laser will not fire. When set to a value greater than the projected time of fall, the laser will fire immediately after weapon release. When auto laser is set to off, the laser is fired manually by the pilot using the HOTAS nose wheel steering button or the insert key on the keyboard. If the latch option of the TGP is also set to off, the laser only fires as long as the nose wheel steering button is held down. The SOLN solution rotary on OSB-16 selects between ORP, optical release point, and BAL, ballistic release point solution cues for a CCRP release. Turn on auto lays with OSB-6. Set the LS time value to 10 seconds by entering 10 into the UFC scratch pad, followed by OSB-17. Press OSB 3 to save the changes to this profile. Press OSB 19 to switch to the GBU 38 profile and then OSB 3 to view the profile control page. Once again, the options on the profile control page are familiar. Let's take a look at the profile settings page with OSB 16. As you can see, there are no unique options specific to the GBU-38 yeah, profile settings. Nice. Let's bring the left MFCD back to the TAD page with OSB-15. Oh, and by the way, just to reinstate what you said earlier. Yeah, the flight manual is, it, it's a really big book. It's 600 pages, but it's not that bad. Like, I, it's, you just have to do it in, in portions and... That's how I'm pretty much reading everything and learning it. It's just, I kind of, not, it's not saying I'm skimming through stuff. I'm just going through areas where I know 
what it is and I reread it so I can get better at better knowledge of how to utilize it and then utilizing that with the tutorials kind of helps learn the, the A10 a lot easier and I would assume it's a, a similar process with all the other modules employing PGMs from the A10C is relatively straightforward all you need to do is designate the target point as the sensor point of interest speed and release the weapons in CCRP mode to begin Set the TGP to air to ground AG mode by pressing OSB2 on the right MFCD. There we go. Isn't it's usually page best page? to prepare for the engagement while keeping the target at your 2 or 10 o'clock position. Otherwise, you run the risk of running over the target before you are finished setting up for the attack. In this case, the weapons range is co located with waypoint 4, range. We can use this waypoint to cue the TGP to the target. Set your steer point for waypoint four range. There we go. Waypoint four range. Now slave all sensors to speed by pressing the hot test China hat forward long command or the V key on the keyboard. As you can see, now you should now be looking directly at the target array range. Note that although the TGP can see out to a great range, you generally want to be under twenty miles for visual detection of a target. Make the TGP your soy by pressing the hold test coolie hat right long command or hold the K key on the keyboard. Change the field of view FOV setting to narrow by pressing the hold test China hat forward short command or the V key on the keyboard. To get a closer view of the target area, you can zoom in by holding the hold test Demus up command or home key on the keyboard. Your first target is on the southeast corner of the array, now marked with red smoke. Slew the TGP to the target using the hot task slew control or semicolon comma period forward slash key commands on the keyboard. Once the crosshairs are over the target, press the hot task Temus up command or left control and up arrow keys on the keyboard to set the TGP to area track mode. Repeat the command to set the TGP to point track mode. Come on. Okay. <laughs> uh now what is the deal? Zoom out a little bit. How about that? That is weird. Can't get it to point track for some reason. Once the crosshair is over the target, press the TMS up command and the arrow key. Yeah, it's weird. I can't get it to point track for some reason. Zoom out real quick, see what the problem is. Look away from it. I am running into all the technical difficulties right now. So I'm pressing the, the button and it's not wanting to do it. I know. <laughs> Everything works so much better when I'm uh, not live. But when I am, see? And I'm pressing the, the right buttons. 
Because you can actually see it switching between them, but it's not the point track mode is what I'm trying to get. So let's see if I can't figure this out. R and R. Come on. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Is there a way for me to do it manually? No, don't do this to me. The only thing I can think of is there's a possibility that maybe I have to turn into it a little bit better. Yeah, all all the problems happens when I'm actually trying to get things to work right. Well, I guess uh, having these technical difficulties and maybe learning them, how to get past it, will be helpful. Because oh, now make go. the target your new speed by pressing the hold test team is up long command or holding the left control. I don't know how I fixed it. Just kept pressing the button, reoriented the air the aircraft, and it switched. So I don't know exactly what might have fixed that maybe turning the aircraft and making sure the aircraft is flying in a correct pattern maybe might have fixed it because there's a lot of there's a when it comes to aircraft like this there's a lot of things that gets in the way it could be elevation it could be the way it was tilted maybe the camera wasn't facing in the right direction those are a lot of small little things that could have caused the issue so the best thing is always to if it doesn't work reorientate yourself and try it again and maybe that that fixes it control and up arrow keys on the keyboard as we approach the range bring up the DSMS page on the left MFCD by pressing OSB 14 press the select down rocker key on the UFC to select the GBU 12 profile and make sure the HUD is in CCRP mode it is Autopilot is now off. You have control. Now maneuver the aircraft to line up the azimuth steering line ASL with the projected bomb impact line P-bill of the CCRP reticle. When you are about 20 seconds from the release point, a time to release numeric TTRN will appear adjacent to the solution queue at the top of the ASL. About 5 seconds before release, the solution queue and TTRN will begin to move down the ASL toward the CCRP reticle. At that point, you need to press and hold the weapon release button and the bomb will separate as the solution queue passes through the reticle. There we go. Zoom out so we can get a nice little view of the explosion here. Sometimes you can actually see the miss the the missile dropping in towards it. Which is Monitor cool. the projected time to impact countdown displayed on the bottom right corner of the right MS C D and also the left side Four, of the HUD below the three, airspeed indication two, keep the crosshairs one, over the target nice hit flash one. let's separate out a bit nice. and we'll use a GBU 38 for the second pass press the select rocker key on the UFC once more to select the GBU 38 profile give me one moment Apologize about that. Uh, what'd you say, Ross? I think it's because you turned and pointed towards the target point track. Once you have pointed 
it will track while you orbit the target. Yeah, um, it could be possibly a combination of that. But I do believe, I think the definition of the, what the point track does is when you're, when you set it to point track, if it's a moving vehicle, it'll keep following it. I believe that's actually what point tracking is, but it could be as well the orientation of the aircraft. If it's, if it's oriented in the same direction, it might, might be as well. So that, that is a possibility. All right, let's separate out a bit and we'll use the GB38 second pass. 38 weapons profile. There we go. Your second target is on the northwest corner of the array, now marked with red smoke. Locate the target with the TGP and begin a gentle left-hand turn to line up for the second pass. Mark the target as the new SPI and begin tracking in either area or point track modes. But yeah, then I am release both. indication is similar to LGB CCRP release. Range carrots are indicated inside the reticle for maximum and minimum range. As you approach the release point, the ASL will begin to fall down the HUD, and the range bar of the reticle will begin to unwind. When the range bar is between the maximum and minimum range carriage of the reticle, press and hold the weapons release button until the bomb separates. Releasing the weapons release button too quickly may result in a hung store error. There it is. Yeah, it's already set the point track. So yeah, it could be a little bit of both. Might be have to be in the orientation of where you're trying to go to, as well as uh, it does track. If it's a moving target, it, it'll track it and point track. But as you can see, it was a lot easier this time. So I must. It might be the fact that. Oh, that's the other one you got to see. You gotta release right when it gets close to the to that first arrow. See, there we go. Drop complete. You got about 36 seconds. Let's get into an angle where I, that way we can actually watch this thing visually, so we can actually see the drop. Good hit on that second target. Nice. That was nice. That was cool. This concludes the training lesson on the employment of precision guided munitions. You have a single GBU-12 and GBU-38 remaining to practice if you wish. Alright. So that concludes that one. Let's uh, start working on the next tutorial. But yeah, the nice thing about the mistakes that I'm going through right now and the the issues actually kind of help you learn how to utilize the weapons correctly. Because you mess up, then you want to figure out what 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 went what went wrong, so that way you know how to fix yourself. So kind of sucks because it makes it makes it a little longer, but you know now you know how to troubleshoot. So it's, it's a little bit of a good and bad. <laughs> Make a mistake, but now I know how to fix it. So we're on to the to the last part of uh, this training day three is the Mavericks. Welcome to the training lesson on the employment of the AGM-65 Maverick. 
In this lesson, we'll practice targeting and firing live mavericks against a number of targets on the weapon's range. lower that the AGM 65 Maverick is a precision guided standoff air to ground missile that is best suited against armored air defense and fortified targets the Maverick can only be loaded on stations 3 and 9 and either from the Lao 117 single rail launcher or the Lao 88 triple rail launcher the Maverick family of missiles includes several versions that differ in seeker and warhead types the Maverick is a fire and forget weapon, meaning once launched you no longer need to guide the weapon. Practical engagement range of the Maverick is generally restricted by a seeker lock-on range, and this generally happens between 3 and 7 nautical miles. When entering a combat area, you may wish to use the Maverick to eliminate any air defense units prior to approaching the target. Yep, this is, this is the fun parts. There we go. So I always forget, this is the one that's the, what do you call that? Most Combat code? Maverick versions carried by the 810C include AGM-65D, imaging infrared seeker with a 125 pound shaped warhead, can be loaded on Lao 117 or up to 3 on a Lao 88. AGM-65G, imaging infrared seeker with a 300 pound heavyweight penetrator warhead, can be loaded on Lao 117. AGM-65H, Electro-optical seeker with a 125-pound shaped warhead can be loaded on Lao 117 or up to 3 on a Lao 88. AGM-65K, electro-optical seeker with a 300-pound heavyweight penetrator warhead can be loaded on Lao 117. Yeah, these... These missiles are fun. Let's review our payload on the DSMS page. Press OSB 14. Today, we are carrying two AGM-65Ds on stations 3 and two AGM-65Hs on stations 9. Press OSB 2 to access the missile control page. OSB 2. All Maverick types require approximately three minutes to align the Seeker gyroscope before being available for use or displaying a video signal from the Seeker. As discussed in the DSMS lesson, you can use this page to set automatic Seeker power on at a specific clock time or the aircraft's location relative to a specific waypoint. However, because the weapons range is nearby, let's go ahead and start the alignment process now. Press OSB 4 to engage the EO Electro Optical Power On. There we go. And then now you can actually see the timer going. The it's EO timer minutes. at the bottom right corner of the left MFCD now indicates time since EO power was applied. Now set the right MFCD to the MAV page with OSB 14. There we go. That's weird. The MAV page is indicating a line while the missile seeker heads are aligning. Once the alignment process is complete, it will begin to display video from the priority missile. The sensor indication along the left side of the display means that no Maverick profile is selected for fire and the missile is being used as an yeah, EO annoying. sensor. To make the Maverick easier to control, let's slow down the slew rate. Enter 2 into the UFC scratch pad, followed by OSB 8 on the MAV page. You can adjust the slew rate as desired throughout this mission. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. Yeah, you know, the lower the value, the slower the slew rate. Set your steer point for waypoint 2 and proceed with the takeoff. Climb to 6,000 feet, maintain runway heading.
Keep down the middle. Wheel steering off. Start pulling back. Gears up. Flaps up. Start gaining altitude. Without losing too much air. Speed. Set the master arm switch to on. Master arm. To employ the Maverick most effectively, it's best to first designate a sensor point of interest, SPI, in the target area, and then use the slave all sensors to SPI command on the HOTAS to slave the Maverick to the SPI. You can then slew the seeker closer to the target, and once the missile is tracking, fire away. So, it's ready to go. Just gonna keep getting some altitude while we wait. 180 nautical miles, uh, air, the airspeed is a good rate of climb. Waypoint 3 marks the target range. Set your steer point for waypoint 3, range, and turn right to put the target range at your 12 o'clock. Alright. Let's bank and turn. Level off. The math page is now displaying video from the AGM-65H loaded on Station 9. Note this version of the missile uses a CCD charge couple device camera, which is not suitable for low light visibility operations, unlike the AGM-65D on Station 3, which uses an IR infrared camera. Keep your airspeed around 200 knots so we have enough time to prepare for the attack. With the HUD set as soy, press the HOTAS Demus right command to select the AGM-65H profile on Station 9. A dynamic launch zone, DLZ, has replaced the sensor indication on the left side of the MAV page. The DLZ consists of a collection of indicators that displays the Maverick's maximum and minimum range, allowable launch window, the current target range, and the estimated time of flight at the bottom of the DLZ. On the HUD, the wagon wheel indicates the missile line of sight, LOS, and will move as you slew the seeker. Make the Mavic soy by pressing the HOTAS coolie switch right long command or holding the K key on the keyboard. There we go. So we slewed it. Soy. Your first target will be a pair of T-72s on the southwest corner of the array. The target is now marked with red smoke. Waypoint 3 range is set directly over the target array. Because the current steer point is set by default as the speed, we can quickly slew the Maverick to the target location by pressing the Hotest China Hat Forward Long Command while holding the V key on the keyboard. The four field of view FOV corner markers around the center of the display indicate the visible area of the narrow field of view setting. Zoom in on the target by changing the MAF FOV to narrow by pressing the HOTAS China Hat Forward Short Command or the V key on the keyboard. The pointing cross below the center of the crosshairs indicates the seeker LOS relative to the nose of the aircraft. To target using the Maverick, we need to slew the seeker LOS toward the target using the HOTAS slew control switch or the semicolon, comma, period, and forward slash keys on the keyboard. The seeker will attempt to automatically lock onto a contrasting target whenever the slew control switch is released. Because lock-on range is highly variable, it may take some time and a few attempts before the seeker is able to find a target. To prevent you from having to consistently slew the seeker head to maintain LOS to the target, 
You can ground stabilize the missile in the target vicinity by pressing the HOTAS TMIS down command or left control and down arrow keys on the keyboard. Try now to lock one of the T-72s marked as your target. Once the target is acquired, the crosshairs will clamp on it and the pointing cross will begin to flash. At this point, you can fire the missile. All right. Rifle. No track launch. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god, it's I'm telling you it's today. What what did I do wrong? No track launch. All right, let's make another pass. Wow. I am literally going through all the problems. <laughs> so no track. I know I pressed something when I was doing that. So let's uh figure out what it is. Hmm. I have no idea what I did wrong. We're just gonna wait for another pass here. It's full throttle for now. has to be one of those days Let's see how far back we are so wait until I'm like around six six miles out and then I'll turn back to it I'm trying to figure out what I pressed If I pressed anything. Master armed. Is it because of that? I'm not 100% sure what caused it. So let's try another pass here. Have you guys saw the reason why? Like if I press something and something changed? Because I don't know what I might have pressed by accident. Start slowing down a little bit here. Let's try this one more time. Stop it. Come on. There we go. So do that. Should be good to go. And it works just perfectly fine. <laughs> Can someone tell me what, what went wrong on that last pass? I did everything exactly the same way. Let's uh, watch this thing blow up. Let's see. Nope. Boom. So yeah, I'm not sure what what went wrong on that one. Not sure. Didn't see the blinking cross. I 
I thought we had a blinking cross though. You didn't have the green box around the display. Maybe I didn't realize that one. Could be why. Maybe I was too close though. Maybe that's the reason why. Because when I decided to actually launch the ordinance, I believe maybe I might have been too close at that point as well. So I was struggling a little bit. It's a little bit on the hard side. But you know what? Let me try this. This might help me a little bit. Let's lower that. We'll slow it down to one. I'm going to go for another pass while we're at it. Go back to... Six, six uh, nautical miles out. But yeah, hmm. I was gonna say pitch down. Yeah, it's it's a possibility that my my pitch might have been no. Usually when I do it, I'm I'm in autopilot, so I'm at a level flight when I launch them. And I don't think you have to pitch, you don't, you don't necessarily have to pitch too down. I think what ended up happening is either two things. It wasn't, it wasn't a perfect lock and or I might have been too close by the time I went to launch it. And it lost the lock. So there's, there's a possibility. I don't think the pitch had to do with it because I don't think, you don't necessarily, you don't need to face your aircraft into it. Because uh, the way the Maverick works, once they launch, they kind of do their own thing. So it shouldn't matter too much on the direction I'm looking. Alright, let's uh, get another pass here going. We'll try it again. Warning, almost, autopilot. I almost feel like messing that up again just to see what might have caused that. Besides for my noobness. <laughs> Level flight, autopilot. Uh, what did you say, Ross? What I mean was you was too close so that you needed to pitch down to get a better angle. Yeah, that might have been... I, it's a combination of all three of those. I was too close, I had to pitch down, and I probably didn't have a good lock. Nope, not trying to lock onto that. And it's not letting me unlock it. So that's odd. Not trying to shoot that. There we go. Let's see. No, look at that. I'm almost right above it. I had a had, I was almost entirely above it. When I shot that, like I bet you, if I tilt, we'll warning see it. autopilot, yeah. and I, that was a hit too. I was almost directly above it, so I think what it was is the the lock. I might not have had a perfect lock when I tried to launch the that first one. Interesting. Hey, what is it, what else do we have to do here? I just shot both my targets and usually that'll continue the mission. Did I not get a kill on it? They're, they're both smoking. That's odd. Yeah, you might be right on that one. I wasn't 100% paying attention on the the crosshair being locked, so there might have been that. So I just took down both targets, and it still doesn't want me to keep going. So I'm trying to figure out now why 
it doesn't want to continue on the tutorial. Let's fix the heading. Yeah, by now he should have told us what to do next. So I took down both targets. The Mavs are, they're not hard to use. I just make it look hard. That's how you, that's how you keep your job as an A-10 pilot. You make your, make the job look extremely hard to do. So it only seems like I'm the only person that can do it. So we, we did both targets. I don't know what else it wants us to do. I thought it was supposed to let us do the next part of this mission here. So we got that. We got a lock. There we go. We might actually be able to. Let's see if we can follow that missile inbound. I believe that's all of it. Oh, you heard the bomb explode from here? Uh, using the Mavs on the hair is so much easier. To use. Yeah, it just... I really think I'm just making it look just difficult to use. They're not hard. I just have, I'm making all the mistakes when, when it's a live stream. But yeah, no, that's it. I believe there's nothing else I can do. And there's nothing else left on here. Let's be this real quick so I can... Yeah, that's it. But yeah, no, that's uh, that's really the tutorial on this one too. I don't remember if there's anything else except for... I believe he just makes us destroy more stuff. <laughs> I, can do, I can go for a gun run. I love, I love using the Avenger, so can do that but yeah that's the tutorial it's just uh, learning how to use the Mavericks so I learned another thing new today if you don't have a perfect lock you'll get that error pop up so you gotta always be aware that you have a perfect lock because I thought I really did but apparently I didn't. So what we're gonna do is let's uh get another look here. Get the other guy so I can uh oh my gosh. Come on. <laughs> I'm chasing it. That's fine. Pull up! Pull up! Pull up! Pull up! Let's go for the ones over there on the... ...far end.
Pull up. Pull up. Good hit on that target. Let's come off the target now and fly a few miles out for a second pass with the AGM 65D. Maintain 6,000 feet. Oh, there he goes. Welcome back, trainer. Employment of the AGM 65D will be identical, except the video will be in Imaging Infrared IIR. You can use the HOTAS both switch <laughs> forward and aft commands to select between white and black MAV indication on the MFCD. Setting the boat switch in the center position will engage the Maverick Force Correlate mode, which can be used to track a specific point of a larger target, such as a building. Before we roll in for the second pass, let's review the targeting procedure. Select the AGM 65D using either the select rocker key on the UFC or by making the HUD soy and pressing the HOTAS Demus left right commands or page down delete keys on the keyboard. Slave all sensors to speed by pressing the HOTAS China Hat Forward Long Command or hold the V key on the keyboard. Select Narrow FOV for the Maverick by pressing the HOTAS China Hat Forward Short Command or the V key on the keyboard. Slew the Seeker toward the target until it acquires a lock. Ground stabilize if necessary by pressing the HOTAS Temis Down Command or Left Control and Down Arrow keys on the keyboard. Fire once in range. If you need to reset the Maverick to Boresight HUD Center, Press the HOTAS China Hat Aft short command or the C key on the keyboard. Hey, good call out, Ross. <laughs> that little gun run made us uh, finally get through the next part of the tutorial. If all else fails, go all guns. Alright, just grabbing some altitude and we'll turn back. There we go, 10 angels. There we go. It's leveled flight here. Pull back on the throttle. I think it's because I destroyed everyone over there. Is anyone else? Alright, let's go for these guys then. Warning, autopilot. Oh no. Mess with my movement too much there. It's literally gripping everything except for what I want. Come on, big boy. Oh my god, we're going to have to go for another pass. See, I have my controls set to the joystick, so I'm, I'm going to have to rebind those. We're going to have to go for another pass here. fix my orientation real quick so the problem is what is going on right here is it has to do with my my binding it's I have I have my slew on my joystick which is the reason I think the reason why it's becoming so difficult because when I'm trying to move my slew I'm jittering my hand too much on the joystick and it's it's actually doing this to my aircraft that's the reason why and it's only on, it's only on my side because uh, the, the whole test that I'm using my actual mouse slew button doesn't work correctly I have the x55 
but my slew mouse, my, my little nipple, doesn't work. So I had rebounded it to my POI hat switch, which is on my right hand throttle, which is what utilizes my aircraft pitch and elevation and stuff. So that's the reason why I'm ha getting that. That's why it's becoming so difficult, because as you can see, look, I'm, mo I'm trying to move the slew, and you see how the aircraft is moving so much? And that's because of, uh, I'm using my thumb, and it's on my, my joystick. So I have to rebind it to somewhere else. So we'll try that one more time. All right, so let's try this again. There we go. That was all. So I got no more. So we're going to go guns hot on this one. Yeah, what it is is I, I rebinded my slew keys to be under my POI hat, which is not a ideal location apparently because if you're moving that a lot, warning autopilot. That's your, that's your, that's on the joystick. So what I'm gonna have to end up doing, let me pause that. What I'm gonna have to end up doing is rebinding it so it's on the throttle, replace, not replacing, but just another button on the throttle. So that way it's not. I'm not doing that. There goes the hit. All right, let's go for a pass here. Pull up, pull Your up. Second target will be a pair of air defense vehicles on the northeast corner of the array. The target is now marked with red smoke. Make sure you pull have up, waypoint three range selected as the steer point and turn back toward the target array. Break off. Try another pass. It said it was marked with the smoke. I don't see any smokes though. Gonna have to gun him down. Said it had smokes, but I don't see any smokes. Go for another pass on these guys. Pull up, pull up.
Is it another location that he wanted us to go? Because he said the, the next targets was supposed to have smokes. I don't see any smokes in this area. And we took out everything, I believe. All the targets are down except for one. 8.3. Yeah, this is waypoint three. It's the range. Where we're at right now is waypoint three. We'll go for the last pass on that one over there. At the end of the road, that's still alive. Pull up! Pull up! Ooh, that's a little... Close. Altitude! Al pull up! Pull up! Turn on TGP. Maybe that'll help us. Oh, we don't have the lighting. Yeah, we took everything out too. It's what he said is that there is supposed to be another armored unit right off the range. And they're supposed to have smokes. But I don't see him. How far is the next waypoint? 16 miles? Where is it at? No, I see that's... We're supposed to be here. All the other waypoints are going back to Batumi. So our target is here. For some reason it's not showing up though. The only other thing I can think of is using the lighting pod and check an infrared and see if I don't see anything. Let's see if I can't figure it, figure out where he's at. Oops, wrong button. It's that one. All right, so let's see if I can't find out where he's at. Oh, wrong place. Uh, go up, down. That's where we're supposed to be. We gotta turn around, we're a little too far back. Far out. We'll find it with uh, the targeting pod for sure, with Fleur.
Alright. Sit there. Nope. Those are gone. Yeah, that's weird. It, I can't find it. Can't find the the ones that he's talking about. Hmm. Warning, we might, autopilot. We might have to call it here because maybe the tutorial broke. You know, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, with all the technical difficulties I've been running into here. Where is the runway? The X runway, I'm right above it. Hmm. Yeah, Ross, I think we're gonna have to call it here. <laughs> yeah, no, uh... I saw your, your invite. We're going to be ending it here anyways. But yeah, no, I appreciate you jumping on the stream, man. Uh, you get to, you got to ride along with my, all my little, my little, uh, bad offs, but enjoy the rest of your night, man. And, uh, we'll see if we can get on a game and do some fly, fly togethers. Next time is <laughs> hopefully my next tutorial will go a little bit better because uh, that's the last last two of the training day. So we'll see on the next one. But yeah, man, 